What is going on, friends? Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Sports from the Couch here on the Mercado Airwaves Network. I'm your host, Mike Mercado, and I want to thank you so much for making us a part of your day. On today's episode, Tyreek Hill is in the news again. The NFL gives his decision on the Kareem Hunt situation. We have a bunch of NFL trades and free agency news. We give our UFC London picks. Major League Baseball has brand new rules for the 2019 season. We dig into what the MLB and the MOPA released this past week. We take a look at who's the odds-on favorites to win the the men's NCAA March Madness Tournament. Stay with us for all that and much more here on Sports from the Couch on Mercado Airwaves. I'm Mike Mercado. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound-for-pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. Another day that the opera I could go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else and how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. Enjoy our shows? Follow the Mercado Airwaves crew all over social media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. On Instagram, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 2121. Mike is at Mike Mercado 2333. And our true crime show is at Murder Mysteries and More. And on Twitter, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 21 Alex. And Mike is at M Mercado 2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airwaves. Follow our pop culture show on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Get us on the go by downloading our programs anywhere you get your favorite podcast, like iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, and other popular sites. Just search us at Mercado Airwaves. While you're at it, please like, rate, review, and share us with your friends. Visit us on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. Click the subscribe and like button to get notified every time a new episode or interview is posted. Support Mercado Airwaves by visiting Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves, the home of our interviews with athletes and celebrities, which you can get ad-free and early before it's released to the public. Come play video games with us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Mercado Airwaves is powered by Munch Art Design. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. Voice over work on Mercado Airwaves is performed by Josh Fox. So the MLB and MLBPA announced some new on-field changes that would take effect for the 2019 season. Let's take a look at a couple of these. I was able to print out the official agreement and Major League Baseball's Player Association's website. So for inning breaks, subject to discussion with broadcast partners, any breaks will be reduced from 2 minutes and 5 seconds to 2 minutes in local games and from 2 minutes and 25 seconds to 2 minutes in national games. The maximum number of mound visits per team will be reduced from 6 to 5. The trade deadline will remain July 31st. However, trade waivers will be eliminated. Players may be placed and claimed on outright waivers after July 31st but players may not be traded after that date. Joint committee, MLB, and the MLBPA will form a joint committee to study other potential changes. They are changing up some of the all-star game voting and home run derby stuff. How about we go to the active roster provisions? The active roster limit from opening day through August 31st and in the postseason games will increase from 25 to 26, and the minimum number of active players will increase from 24 to 25. The current Major League rules allowing for a 26th player for doubleheaders will be amended to allow for a 27th player. Very interesting. Elimination of 40-man active rosters limit in September. From September 1st through the end of the championship season, all clubs must carry 28 players on the active roster. The number of pitchers a club may carry on the active roster will be capped at a number determined by the joint committee. Clubs must designate each of its players as either a pitcher or a position player prior to each player's first day on the active roster for a given season. That designation will remain in effect for the player and cannot change for the remainder of the championship season and the postseason. No player on the active roster other than those designated as pitchers by the club may appear in a championship season 
or postseason game as a pitcher except in the following scenarios. Player designated as a two-way player. A player qualifies as a two-way player only if he occurs at least 20 major league innings pitch and at least 20 major league games started as a positional player or designated hitter. Following the ninth inning of an extra inning game, in any game in which his team is losing or winning by more than six runs when the player enters as a pitcher. This is where some of the more controversial rules come in right here. Minimum number of batters for pitchers. The Office of the Commissioner will implement an amend official baseball rule 5.10G requiring that starting pitchers and relief pitchers must pitch to either a minimum of three batters or the end of a half inning with the exceptions for incapacitating injury or illness. The Player Association has agreed that it will not grieve or otherwise challenge the Office of the Commissioner's implementation of the amended Rule 5.10G and the injured list and options period for pitchers, subject to input from the Joint Committee, the minimum placement period for pitchers and on the injured list shall increase from 10 days to 15 days, and the minimum assignment period of pitchers who are Optionally assigned to the minors will increase from 10 days to 15 days. So that's a lot of stuff that they're doing in, what, just two weeks for the Major League Baseball season to start in 2019. But something that really caught my eyes right away is obviously the three batter rule. And a lot of these rules you you could see is baseball trying to make baseball faster. And I think that's a it's an uphill battle. I don't think it's the time that kills people. I think it's the action. That kills people. If you think about it, they've taken out the baseball and baseball. It's all strikeouts, home runs, or fly balls. There really is no more situational hitting. There is no more eight-run innings in which you're seeing a single, a double, a home run, a single, a double. It, it's very much all about launch angle. And that's fine. Launch angle is legit. It, you know, the analytics of baseball are real. Whatever your feelings may be on it, the stats do show that it matters. Or at the very least, you have to take into consideration. But I think baseball has bigger problems than just its pace of play. I think there are some things that have killed it. I think the fact that some games do drag on. I think the fact that you do see some pitchers that have no belonging in Major League Baseball. I think a lot of it also, too, is the product hasn't been that good for a lot of different markets. And you can't just put a Band-Aid on it. You have to acknowledge what the problem is, which is teams don't want to spend money and compete. Because they're making just as much money being cheap. Especially with these TV deals and the way the MLB, PA, and the bargaining agreement worked out for a lot of these quote-unquote small market teams. So it's very interesting to see these rules changes and the fact that the PA went with it. And with that in mind that it's going to be a, a possibly a player strike in 2021. And I wonder what this means for positional players in general. I wonder if they're trying to make it. See, the one rule I'm, I'm waiting for them to implement is whether or not they ever get rid of the shifts. And I don't know if that's what you should do. You know, I think the shifts are really great for baseball. I mean, you can't argue with, you know, A, 60% of the time he hits the ball here, you should probably defend it here. But it is kind of bush league sometimes. And I can understand people, especially people who want an exciting game, can kind of get up, upset about it. But I think some of these rules benefit the game, at least they're trying. I think their intentions are in the right place. But I think what you have to focus on first is getting your product out there. Let me ask you this. Other than Bryce Harper, who's already hurt in, in, in spring training, who's the star of Major League Baseball? Of, to us fans, we know it's Mike Trout. To me as a Cub fan, it's Chris Bryant. Half, half the Cubs team. Aaron Judge because he plays for the Yankees. But there's no LeBron James, Kyrie Irving of of MLB really think about the NBA and how even though that's a very much a regional sport because either like the Bulls the Bucks whatever they've done a great job of making you care about the national scene what about baseball though baseball's the ultimate local sport you care about your team and your division as a Cub fan or if you're listening to if you're a Cardinals fan for example or if you're a Reds fan hell let's even go even to San Diego let's go to the American League let's go to Seattle do you really care what the Yankees are doing not really unless you're vying for a number one seed when it comes to the end of the season. But unless you're in the division of the Yankees, you really don't care. But all the media is going to push it down your throats. Opposed to exposing everybody. Think about where we would be at if Cleveland, who was a hell of a team in 2016, had won the World Series. Do you think the media toward that the Cubs did in 16, Fallon and Kimmel 
and Saturday Night Live would have been the same. See, baseball doesn't capitalize on on, on itself. And one of the biggest problems I have with baseball is it's blackouts. See, football and basketball say, your money is green and valid anywhere you're at. Please buy our packages. Why not baseball? And of course, a lot of these have to do with TV deals and whatnot. But, you know, I think baseball has bigger problems than, than just pace of game. You know, and here's the thing. A game is longer when there's a lot of offense too, right? You know, let's say somebody goes off for eight runs, nine runs. Typically, that means the innings are going longer. Now, it does pose some interesting scenarios in the playoffs. You know, let's say your relief pitcher comes out and let's say Brandon Morrow comes out and he throws eight straight balls, walks the first two hitter, and now he has to go against Bryce Harper or Joey Votto or Paul Goldschmidt in a playoff game. What do you do? See, it is interesting in that. And it's very much interesting in that. But you're also, you're putting, you're taking strategy out of the game too, I think. Where again, I, I think it's kind of like in college basketball where college basketball coaches are able just to dictate the game. Same thing with managers with these pitch changes, these mountain visits. But I think the balance really comes into, we have to acknowledge that baseball is a, a slow sport. That it is a regional sport. But that it is its own fault. The league needs to do a better job of marketing its players. The league needs to do a better job of being, to be accessible for for fans to watch. So some very interesting stuff. But let us know all over social media. I'm on Twitter at mmercado2333 or on Instagram, mikemercado2333. What do you think about these baseball rules heading into the 2019 MLB season? Enjoy our shows? Follow the Mercado Airways crew all over social media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airways. On Instagram, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 2121. Mike is at Mike Mercado 2333. And our true crime show is at Murder Mysteries and more. And on Twitter, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 21 Alex. And Mike is at M Mercado 2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airways. Follow our pop culture show on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Get us on the go by downloading our programs anywhere you get your favorite podcast, like iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, and other popular sites. Just search us at Mercado Airwaves. While you're at it, please like, rate, review, and share us with your friends. Visit us on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. Click the subscribe and like button to get notified every time a new episode or interview is posted. Support Mercado Airwaves by visiting Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves, the home of our interviews with athletes and celebrities, which you can get ad-free and early before it's released to the public. Come play video games with us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Mercado Airwaves is powered by Munch Art Design. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. Voiceover work on Mercado Airwaves is performed by Josh Fox. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the operator to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else. And how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. The busy NFL offseason continued since the last time we talked with you guys. But before we get into some new signings and some information on Kareem Hunt, Tyreek Hill was in the news. This is according to Brooke Pryor and Steve Vokrick of the Kansas City Star. They report Tyreek Hill is being investigated for alleged battery. This is from the Kansas City Star's report. The charges have been filed as of Friday afternoon, though police in Overland Park are still investigating. Hill's son was reportedly injured in an alleged battery, suffering a broken arm. A police report obtained by the Kansas City Star was dated on Thursday, though it's unclear when the incident occurred. 
Hill's fiance, Crystal Espana, was mentioned in the report and has been in contact with police, according to the star. Hill is no stranger to controversy. He was booted from Oklahoma State in 2014 following a domestic violence incident against Crystal, who was pregnant at the time. Hill later pled guilty to a domestic assault and battery by strangulation. It's another PR nightmare for the Chiefs, who dealt with a similar incident involving Kareem Hunt last year. Even if Hill avoids charges, he could be facing a lengthy suspension, especially considering his off-field history. That is from the Kansas City Star on the report of Tyreek Hill being investigated for battery. So not good stuff. It, it seems like whenever the NFL can really just take over the news cycle and good news, good momentum, all these big name athletes and superstars with Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham, Le'Veon Bell joining new teams, these signings we're about to get to. And just like that, on the same day, we, we get a the news about Kareem Hunt on the hammer being dropped and this new allegation of Tyreek Hill, two very talented individuals with um, sketchy stories at the very least. And we will keep an eye on the story. If we find out everything is cleared, we will make sure our responsibility to to give you guys that information. If not, we will follow the story as it goes down, maybe in a, whatever the cases may be with police, courts, and the NFL. But we'll keep an ear and eye on that story. But moving on, thanks to the fine people of rotaworld.com, the NFL section. Here are some signings that happened over the last few days. The Broncos signed cornerback Bryce Callahan to a three year, $21 million deal. And, of course, Bryce Callahan, a former Chicago Bear, we'll get into who is now going to be in the backfield of those Chicago Bears in just a little bit. How about Blake Bortles is having a visit with NFC champion L.A. Rams. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there. If you missed why Blake Bortles is now looking for a new home, check out our last episode of Sports from the Couch where we tell you who replaced him. It's Nick Foles. Speaking of quarterbacks, how about the Titans acquired quarterback Ryan Tannehill and a 2019 six-round pick from the Dolphins in exchange for a fourth-round pick in 2020 and a seventh-round pick in 2019. Very interesting. This is going to be a spot, I think, for Ryan Tannehill to see if he's still a capable NFL starting quarterback. Maybe a change of scenario would do it. We do know Marcus Mariota, as talented as he is, very injury-prone, one of my favorite quarterbacks in the league, or at least coming out of Oregon, uh, the potential was all there, but again, playing a certain type of offense and taking big hits and accidental hits and sometimes just landing wrong, it really can change the projection. So we'll see exactly how this plays out. And again, at least at this way, if the Titans end up in a playoff game again and they need a backup quarterback, Ryan Tannehill has at least done it in the NFL. So they're they're checking their boxes. How about for all you Bears fans? This is from Colleen Kane of the Chicago Tribune. Bears signed Haha ha, Clinton Dix to a one-year $3.5 million deal. Haha ha, was actually brought in from Eddie Jackson, who did a uh, Bears Pro Bowler, who did a little bit of recruiting himself. This is from Colleen Kane's article on the Chicago Tribune. Haha ha, on Eddie Jackson helping him sign. He talked to me in this process about the culture in Chicago, and I bought in. Clinton Dix said, I was on for the ride and I'm excited about it. Me and Eddie were very similar players, and that makes it tough on quarterbacks. We both can play left and right. It's going to be fun and a challenge for other teams. So it's interesting to see the Bears move on. We've already seen what happened with Adrian Amos and, of course, now with Bryce Callahan. But the Bears, Eddie Jackson, and HaHa Clinton Dix will try to keep people on lock. And it's interesting to see where this Bears team is doing. They're locking up certain positions. They just brought in Cordell Patterson, Mike Davis. Obviously, it's going to be interesting to see what they do draft night. We'll be talking about that in just a couple of weeks. But the NFL has been on fire with these free agency and these trades over the last few days. But we've jumped back to world of world of this article. Kareem Hunt's suspension has been nailed down by the NFL. And this is according to Rotor World. NFL suspended Browns running back Kareem Hunt's eight games for violating the league's personal conduct policy. Hunt's ban was expected to be for at least six games. So this falls in line with that. The Browns should be, shouldn't be surprised here for the first half of the season. Nick Chubb will be Cleveland's workhorse. Hunt will not appeal the ban after being caught on video beating up a woman at a hotel. 
the Browns will welcome Hunt back with open arms as long as he doesn't have any more slip ups. NFL teams always bet on talent, no matter how harsh the crime committed, according to Roto World in their article dropping about Kareem Hunt's eight game suspension. And like they said in the article, it is exactly what we expected. And this is where it does get interesting. If you were the Chicago Bears and you knew that it was going to be around eight games, would you have risked it? Was was that ever in consideration for the Bears? Whether if it was six games, that was going to be the cutoff for them. Whether it was going to be four games, that was the cutoff for them. Cleveland took the risk, and Cleveland seems like they're going all in. And it's just like we talked about in the last episode of Sports from the Couch. You have a window with the quarterback until you have to pay them. And we saw it with Russell Wilson in Seattle. We're seeing it with the L.A. Rams in L.A. And we saw it uh, right now with the Bears with Mitchell Trubisky. It's all about that window. We're seeing maybe Baker Mayfield, they believe that front office in Cleveland, that he can help him get to a Super Bowl. And you're bringing in with the draft of Nick Chubb. You're bringing in Kareem Hunt. You have Odo Beckham Jr. You have Landry. You have Baker Mayfield. And you have, you're trying to, you're trying with, with the rest of the division kind of taking a slip down. Mark Ingram going to Baltimore. But obviously Pittsburgh losing both Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. It's interesting to see the NFL and the Browns going all in. But let us know what do you think exactly about these signings and trades over the last week in the NFL. What do you think about this news that just dropped about Tyreek Hill? And what are your thoughts about Kareem Hunt getting an eight-game suspension from the NFL League office? We got more here on Sports from the Couch on the Mercado Airwaves Network. I'm Mike Mercado. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the opera like, to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, sir. I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else. And how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash MikeMercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. Enjoy our shows? Follow the Mercado Airwaves crew all over social media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. On Instagram, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 2121. Mike is at Mike Mercado 2333. And our true crime show is at Murder Mysteries and more. And on Twitter, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 21 Alex. And Mike is at M Mercado 2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airwaves. Follow our pop culture show on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Get us on the go by downloading our programs anywhere you get your favorite podcast, like iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, and other popular sites. Just search us at Mercado Airwaves. While you're at it, please like, rate, review, and share us with your friends. Visit us on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. Click the subscribe and like button to get notified every time a new episode or interview is posted. Support Mercado Airwaves by visiting Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves, the home of our interviews with athletes and celebrities, which you can get ad-free and early before it's released to the public. Come play video games with us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Mercado Airwaves is powered by Munch Art Design. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. Voice over work on Mercado Airwaves is performed by Josh Fox. Selection Sunday is just 24 hours away, and make sure you're following us all over social media to see our picks. But before we get to our UFC London picks, here are some favorites according to Odd Shark. Duke at 200, plus 200, Gonzaga at plus 800, Virginia at plus 800, Kentucky at plus 900. How about North Carolina at plus 1,100? Uh, one, of, one of the picks I like, how about Kansas at plus 2,500, Michigan State at plus 1,400. That's an interesting one. Let us know who do you think is going to win this year's March Madness Tournament. Who are you picking in your bracket? And how much do you love the first weekend of this tournament? It's one of my favorites in all of sports. The UFC is back in London at the O2 Arena on ESPN+. Plus, and we have a bunch of awesome fights. And we will give you our predictions 
really fast in Jack Marshman versus John Phillips. I will go with Jack Marshman. We have Danny Roberts versus Claudio Silva. I will go Claudio Silva. And Nathaniel Wood versus Jose Alberto Cunes. I will go with Jose Alberto. In Vulcan Ostomir versus Dominic Reyes. I will go Vulcan Ostomir. Leon Edwards versus Gunnar Nelson in the co-main event. I will go with Leon Edwards. And in the main event, it is Darren Till versus Jorge Masvidal. I really like Darren Till. He's one of the baddest dudes in the division. Uh, Jorge Masvidal is a tough SOB too. I will go with Darren Till, the local guy. But look out for Jorge Masvidal. He might, uh, he might shock the world. Let us know your predictions, though, of UFC London on ESPN+. Plus. Anywhere on social media, I'm on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, instagram.com slash mikemercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Enjoy our shows? Follow the Mercado Airwaves crew all over social media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. On Instagram, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado2121. Mike is at Mike Mercado2333. And our true crime show is at Murder Mysteries and more. And on Twitter, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado21 Alex. And Mike is at Mercado2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airwaves. Follow our pop culture show on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Get us on the go by downloading our programs anywhere you get your favorite podcast, like iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, and other popular sites. Just search us at Mercado Airwaves. While you're at it, please like, rate, review, and share us with your friends. Visit us on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. Click the subscribe and like button to get notified every time a new episode or interview is posted. Support Mercado Airwaves by visiting Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves, the home of our interviews with athletes and celebrities, which you can get ad-free and early before it's released to the public. Come play video games with us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Mercado Airwaves is powered by Munch Art Design. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. Voiceover work on Mercado Airwaves is performed by Josh Fox. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the opera could go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else and how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. Alrighty, friends, before we end this episode of Sports from the Couch, we want to make sure and give a shout out to every single one of you guys that is going to celebrate St. Patrick's Day this weekend, whether you're here in the great city of Chicago or anywhere else in this great state or around this world. Please enjoy yourself. Please don't overdo it. Enjoy yourself. Be safe. Don't drink and drive and don't overdo it, but have a good time. But because it is St. Patrick's Day, I decided to make a top five list of my favorite green jerseys. Now, I want to give a shout out to two teams really fast before we give this list. One, I want to give a shout out to the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. I am actually a big Notre Dame hater, but I do love those green, those bright green jerseys with the gold helmets. They wear them a lot against USC, and uh, especially during the Brady Quinn era, they wore it a lot. And I also want to give a shout out to the Mexico soccer team. I just love how that green pops with the Mexico logo and everything. But it is time to get to our top five green jerseys. At number five, the Boston Celtics, a classic green jersey with the white lettering. At number four, the Philadelphia Eagles. I actually really like the Donovan McNabb jerseys, the, the, the green, like that kind of slick green. But I actually really like their throwbacks as well. At number three, my favorite college, the U. Miami University, I love the green. I Whenever I think of it, I think of Willis McGahee, Frank Gore, some of those great 
you teams at number this was a tough one between number two and number one but at number two I put the Oakland Athletics I love those green jerseys obviously if uh, you're friends of us here on sports from the couch my high school is colors were that so when I played all sports including baseball even my travel baseball team those were our colors and they're arguably right next to what the pinstripes of the Yankees the Cub jerseys I love I love the Red Sox jerseys, hell, the White Sox have some cool jerseys, but those Oakland Athletic jerseys, even the white ones, but especially those green jerseys are super dope. But my number one favorite green jersey is a jersey that doesn't exist anymore. That's right, the Seattle Supersonics. To me, it is the coolest jersey in the NBA, and it was so underappreciated when it was around, and now that it is gone, I think a lot of us miss it and think it would make a great addition to the NBA, but let us know all over social media on Twitter at mmercado2333 or on Instagram, instagram.com slash mikemercado2333 and on Facebook, give us a like at Mercado Airwaves. Let us know what is your favorite green jersey, but that'll do it for us here on Sports from the Couch. Enjoy all the games. Have a safe, wonderful St. Patrick's Day weekend. Check out all our shows from the network wherever you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. Check out our interviews with athletes and celebrities ad-free at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Follow me, Nicole, and Alex all over social media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. Play video games with us at Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. And a huge shout out to Munch Art Design for powering us here at the network. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. We'll see you next time here on Sports from the Couch on the Mercado Airwaves Network. I'm Mike Mercado. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the operator to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, sir. I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else and how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. Enjoy our shows? Follow the Mercado Airwaves crew all over social media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. On Instagram, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 2121. Mike is at Mike Mercado 2333. And our true crime show is at Murder Mysteries and more. And on Twitter, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 21 Alex. And Mike is at M Mercado 2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airwaves. Follow our pop culture show on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Get us on the go by downloading our programs anywhere you get your favorite podcast, like iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, and other popular sites. Just search us at Mercado Airwaves. While you're at it, please like, rate, review, and share us with your friends. Visit us on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. Click the subscribe and like button to get notified every time a new episode or interview is posted. Support Mercado Airwaves by visiting Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves, the home of our interviews with athletes and celebrities, which you can get ad-free and early before it's released to the public. Come play video games with us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Mercado Airwaves is powered by Munch Art Design. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. Voice over work on Mercado Airwaves is performed by Josh Fox.